have a seat. Now I believe you came to celebrate the birthday of the living God. You came to celebrate Jesus. You know, he never started, he never finished, but he accepted to be born just like a human being. And there was a purpose to that. He wanted to go through the entire process so that he may save you from conception to your death. He went through everything, was conceived, remained in the, the womb, get born, you know, grew like a normal child, died like a normal being, and overcame death. Amen. Amen. So this morning, I will do my best to not be long. I will speak about the birth of Jesus or Jesus' birth. We're going to have a long reading, but it's going to be worthy of reading. We are in the book of Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 to 18. Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 to 18. I am going to do a quick reading. Follow me. The Bible says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who have, has been born king of Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people, chief priests, and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, the land of Judah, are you no means, I sorry, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. <laughs> Herod. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gift of gold, frankincense, and me, and having been warned in the dream not to go back to a road, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord has said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the magic, he was furious and he gave order to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and uh, its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Meiji. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great, great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Amen. Amen. So I wanted to read this story of, that was around the birth of Jesus Christ so that what I am going to say may make sense to you and may also help you to understand certain things that you have been through or maybe you have been through 
and certain things that your children are going through or may be going through or have been through. You know, Jesus is our model, is our light. So everything that, was, that happened to him, it is a model, it tells a lesson. There is absolutely nothing that happened to Jesus that has no lessons. From this scripture, there is a lot of lessons that you can uh, retrieve. But I am going to select few lessons that I want us to retrieve this morning. That's why I said Jesus' birth. What can we learn from Jesus' birth? A couple of things. The first thing, the Bible says that Jesus, when he was born, before him to, was, to, to be born, his dad started to shine somewhere. The Bible said they were Meiji. Meiji, these people, Meiji, they were astrologists. You know, astrologists are those people who are learning the movement of stars. But they were not only astrologists, they were also priests, pagan priests. They were worshipping um, uh, pagan god. But they were also people of science. They were doing science. And then in their science and in their research, because they were also spiritual people, spiritual people doesn't mean necessarily holy people. You can be spiritual and not be holy. Yeah. Witchcraft are spiritual. Yeah. They are spiritual, very spiritual. Yeah. But they, are, they, are, they have nothing to do with holiness. Mm -hmm. Under bracket, there's a teaching somewhere is going around. People are telling people that you need to be spiritual. Spirituality it is different from holiness. Yeah. You can be spiritual because you go in the spirit, but yet not be holy. Yeah. In the world of the spirit, everybody who enter in the spiritual world are spiritual, yeah. but they're not holy. Yeah. All of us, we go there. When we pray, we are spiritual. We go in the spirit. Yeah. But there are also witchcraft to go in the spirit, yeah. but they are not holy. Yeah. So somebody should not come and try to win your heart and teach you spirituality. No. There is no spirituality more than the word of God. Oh, yes. A spiritual man, a true spiritual man is a man who is in perfect communion with God. Yes. That is a spiritual man. Even if you don't fly at night, you are spiritual. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because the, the word of God is more spiritual than anything else. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So, okay, maybe I should put this first. Listen, we know that Jesus was not born on the 25th of December. For many reasons. The great one is, by this time, in the east, there is, there is winter. Yeah. And during winter, you don't take your sheep outside to go and feed them. Yeah. But the Bible says, in the time of Jesus' birth, the shepherds were outside with, their, with their, their sheep. So for sure, it couldn't be December. But nevertheless, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't mind that. We also know that Christmas is coming from, it has a pagan origin. Let me not go there. It has a pagan origin, we know that. But the good thing, as I was praying this morning, I was telling my God Jesus, I was telling him, Lord, I know that Christmas has a pagan origin. But the good thing is, the entire world is recognizing now that you were born one day. That one day you, Jesus, came in the world. Make me Muslim, make me Buddhist, make me whoever. Today, everybody knows that it is the birth of Jesus Christ. And the calendar is starting to count from the birth of Jesus Christ. We are counting from the birth of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the King of Kings. The Bible said that everything will turn for the good of those who love God. Even this pagan feast, God is turning to our good. Nobody's going to work on the 25th. Yeah. Because of Jesus. Yeah. They may do whatever they do during the night to sacrifice people. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. All we know, we are here to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, he was not born. But, it doesn't, ma it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. Jesus being born on the 1st of June, on the 2nd of April, or on the whatever day, the, the, the bottom of the matter, he was born one day. And if you choose to celebrate his birth on the first, and you choose to celebrate his birth on whatever, we, the bottom line is, he came to die for us. Yeah. Do you know that, for instance, 
In Russia, they celebrate Christmas, but they don't celebrate it in December. They celebrate it in January. They celebrate in January. So to celebrate, they decided, okay, I was going to celebrate the birth of Jesus in January. It doesn't matter. So if we celebrate it today or tomorrow, the day doesn't matter. Apostle Paul said that this one takes care of days, this other one doesn't take care of days, it doesn't matter. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all belong to Jesus. January to December all belong to Jesus. And the 25th of December belong to Jesus. So I want to celebrate him today. Hallelujah. Now, let's go quickly to our lessons. I will do my best to be as concise as possible. So the first thing I want you to learn from the birth of Jesus. The Bible says that as the magic, magic here it doesn't mean magic. They actually they are magi. They are astrologers and priests of the East. So they were doing their research. In their research, they saw a star. Because they were spiritual people, they saw a star shining. But according to the radiance or the shining of the star, they can guess that this star is not just a normal star. This star, according to the light it is carrying, it is showing that something is about to happen. The first thing you need to know, every one of you have a star. Before you to get born, spiritual people can see, can guess who you can be. They can guess who you can be. It is possible for some children to, to be known before even them to get born who they will be. There are some people before them to be born, people will become, people have eyes who can see. They can already, you know, foretell what gonna happen with this child. And the Bible says that these people from the eastern part, they already so far away, they saw a star. And they were able to follow until where the child was. Let me tell you, maybe you don't know. You may go and hide with your baby far away there in Alaska, where nobody knows you. And you say, let me give birth here. If your child is an appointed one and has a star, it is possible for people of spirituality to locate your child. They can locate him. So, in the spiritual realms, people can see the stars. So, when they're saying that people are stealing people's stars, they are not wrong. It is possible. I'm going to show you now. So, from your star, we can guess which kind of person you'll be. Jesus, from the radius of his star, people knew that this one is going to be a king. Because this kind of shining is usually from the king. And this pagan people, they were not in Israel. So they didn't know about the story of Israel. But they know, they knew by the radiance of the star that this one is the radiance of the king. Your child or yourself, by the radiance of the star, people may know which kind of person you're going to be. In the spiritual realms, in the spirit, we can see your star. So all of you as you are seated there, if you look at your star, we can know which kind of destiny you have. So star equal destiny. Your star carries your destiny. Your star it is your destiny. Hallelujah. But now listen to what is happening. They saw the star of Jesus from the east. They followed the star. They came and the star guided them. They were not seeing it in their normal eyes, I can tell you. It was not in the normal eyes because they were spiritual people. They were, they were able in the spirit to see the star. And the, the star guided them until, Jerusalem, uh, until Israel, until Bethlehem. They went to Bethlehem. And when they went to Bethlehem, they passed by Jerusalem. They saw the king, Herod, who was Herod, who was the king by that time, the pagan king. He asked them, because those people, the magic, they were not just simple people. Now, Try to think a little bit. If they were simple people, do you think that they could have been noticed by the king? No. They were not simple people. They were high situated people. Those are the people when they enter in the city, everybody will know about them. So they were known to be kings as well. And another, another day I will tell you why they came with three things. Uh, beloved, they came with three things. It was for a reason. They came with gold. They came with me. They came with answers. It was not for nothing. They knew that they are coming 
your life is not hidden. What you will become is not hidden. Maybe it is hidden to you. Because there are people here who don't, they don't, they don't even know their destiny. You don't even know to which destiny God has called you. You don't even know to what destiny God has called you. The Bible said they came, they said, this task is showing the destiny of a king. We are coming to worship this king. Because he's not just a normal king. He is the king of kings. Now listen to this. When they came, they went to Bethlehem. They went to Bethlehem. So when they entered to Bethlehem, something happened to Bethlehem. Joseph, who was the stepfather to Jesus, was having his fiancée, who was now pregnant by the power of the Holy Ghost. And now the fiancée, we know the story. The fiancée now, there was a decree saying that everybody must go back to his village for to be counted or to do the censor. So everybody must go to his village. I want you to follow me very well. So that you may understand what is happening to your life. The Bible says that Joseph was from the tribe of Judah. So he needed to go back to Bethlehem because he was from the family of David. So he wanted to go back to Bethlehem which was the city of the king. The city of the king David. So he went back to Bethlehem. Hallelujah. So when he arrived in Bethlehem, because every all the people went to their own city, many places were filled by other people. So when they arrived there, something happened. The Bible says when they arrived there, all the hostels were filled. You see, many people are thinking that Jesus was born in the Manjua because his father was poor. Joseph was not a poor man. He was a carpenter. Yes. He could afford for his family. Yes. But the Bible said that when they, you can read it, you can read it. Oh, yes. When they arrived, you can read it in the book of Luke chapter 2, oh, yes. verse 1 to 7. When they arrived in Bethlehem, there was no place to sleep because people were coming from everywhere. It was full. It's like Friday when it was at, at, at uh, Waterfall Mall. Nowhere to pass, full of people. And the Bible says that now, Joseph, who was having his money, he didn't find any place. It was so full that the only open place, it was in a manjua. You can imagine that. Yeah. It was so full that the only place it was where uh, sheep and cows and whatever are kept. Yeah. And it was suddenly the pain took Mary and then went there and gave birth there. Because there was no place to go, they covered the baby with whatever they're covering the sheep. Now listen to this. There is nothing that happened for nothing. All this, the Bible says, was happening to accomplish the prophecy. Everything that is happening to your life is happening to accomplish the prophecy. You know, there are certain things that you think that it just happened to me. Oh no, it's not just happening to you. It is accomplishing the prophecy. Sometimes, Joseph would have said, but I have my money. Why this God is allowing me to, to be in such a shame? How can I be in a shame? Me with my man, me a carpenter. Well known. A carpenter at Nazareth. Because where they were living. I well known at Nazareth. A carpenter. How can my wife give, give birth to, to GST? Oh my brother. It is accomplishing the prophecy. Amen. It is accomplishing the prophecy. Now which prophecy was it? Remember. Bethlehem means house of bread. Bethlehem means what? House of bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. So him being a bread, he could have not come out from another house. A bread can only come from the house of bread. That's why Jesus needed to be born at Bethlehem, which is the house of bread. Because it's the bread, he needed to get bread, to get born in Bethlehem. This is the reason why God allowed them to go back to Jerusalem. And because of your destiny, there are some places where you're going to go that you don't want. Because of your destiny, there are certain places God will oblige you to be. There are certain companies where God will oblige you to be. There are certain cities where God will make you to be obliged to live. It is not just for nothing. It is because of your destiny. Because you need to accomplish your destiny. Jesus was the bread of life. He needed to be born in the city of bread. How can you a bread come out of a brasserie where they are making a 
I am the Lamb of God. In John chapter 1 verse 29, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming. He said, here is the Lamb of God who removes the sins of the world. Where does the Lamb get born? He got born in a manchua. This is the reason why God blocked every place for Jesus to get born where the lamb are getting born. He wanted to get born with other lamb because he was the lamb of God. That's why he was born there. He was not born there for nothing. He was there, born there to accomplish the prophecy. Beloved, there are certain things that are going to happen to your life. It is because of your destiny. God will make sure that all the doors are blocked, that everything becomes difficult until you go to the place of your destiny. Don't cry when some other things are happening to you. It is just accomplishment of the prophecy. You know, I used to cry when certain things are happening to me. I asked God, why are you humiliating me like that? Why are you making me to be humiliated? like that. He said, it is because of your destiny. I want you to be born that place because it's the place of your destiny. Your destiny is requiring you to get born there. If you are a lamb, you cannot be born in your maternity because you are a lamb. You must be born when lamb are getting born. You are, you are complaining too much. Stop complaining. It is about your destiny. What is happening to you is because of your star. Your star is too big. Your star is requiring you to be born dead. You see, your star will dictate which kind of life you live. The star, your destiny will dictate where you should go. You know, you will apply everywhere you are applying, nothing will happen. You will apply everywhere you are applying, nothing will happen because of your destiny. People will try to take you away, nothing will happen because of your destiny. Because of your destiny, because of your destiny, you will be there. Hallelujah. So then the second thing, because of your destiny, you will be born in a certain place. You are asking yourself, why do I get born from this mother and from this father? You know, if there are things that you will never choose, it is your father and your mother. You cannot choose your father and your mother. God will impose you those people. May they be physical or spiritual parents. Your spiritual parents will not choose them. Today, we have foolish people who are getting new parents. I saw a, another man of God who are changing fathers, fathers in the Lord. He said, you know, I'm tired of this father in the Lord. I'm getting another father in the Lord. Apostle Paul said, you may have a lot of teachers, but I am your father because I give birth to you in the ministry. You can't have two fathers in the Lord. There is only one father in the Lord. Yeah. It is foolishness to change your father, to choose fathers. No, now, now they are decided. It's no longer Pastor Roger. He does not have power. Let me get to that one from India with a long beard and blind in the hay. Foolishness. You can't have two fathers. You have one father. If I'm the one who gives birth to you in the Lord, give birth to you in the ministry, I am your father. There is no other father. No matter how bad that can be, you don't choose your father. You don't choose your father. Those who are here who don't talk to their mothers, to their fathers, you are cursed. You better after this one go and reconcile with your father. Yeah. There are people here because he's having money now. The mother is a witchcraft. The father is a witchcraft. It is a problem with you. Yeah. Your mother may be the witchcraft, but still she is your mother. Yeah. Your father may be the witchcraft, but still she is of he is your father. Yeah. And anyway, this is what you don't understand. Children were made to be greater than their parents. Oh, yeah. So if you become greater than me, you cannot think that, oh, you know I'm greater than my pastor Roger. I'm able to do healing that he cannot do. I'm able to fly in the air he cannot fly. It is natural you must do greater than me. Yeah. My children are called to be taller than me. Do you know that? Yeah. Your children are called to be taller than me. My children are already taller than me. When I stand with my daughter, this one is almost taller than me. They are called like that. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you can't choose your parents. Tell your neighbor you can't choose your parents. You are thinking, no, I'm going to change it up. This father, I don't love him anymore. You know, I suffer those kind of things to try to change my parents. Beloved, God will impose you your parents. You choose your wife, you choose where to live, you choose your career, but you can't choose your parents. You can't choose your spiritual parents. You don't know from which man of God you will get born. Respect the person who gives birth to you in the Lord. Amen. Respect your mother and your father. The Bible said, it, let me insist about this. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. It didn't stop there. So that you may live long. Yeah. In other versions, they say, so that everything may be well with you. Yeah. You see, some trouble you are in is because you 
are not well with your parents. You give them all the names. I don't, I don't dispute the fact that your parent can be a witchcraft. It doesn't matter. Let him be a witchcraft, but honor him. When he comes to your house, say, Papa, I love you. Papa, here is something again. People are, now don't send my money to my mother. My mother is a witch. If you send her money, she will be with you. She came to you nine months in her tummy. She never bewitched you. She sent you to the university. I mean, to the to a small school. Never bewitched you. She sent you to a high school. Never bewitched you. She sent you to the university. Never bewitched you. Beloved, you don't know what parents are going through. When I become a father myself, I understand now. One day I saw my father wearing a broken trouser and a leg. He was sitting like this. I was angry. So like, this guy is making a lot of money. Why is he living like this? I didn't know that he was having this torn trouser so that he can pay the school fees for me to go to the university. I went to the university. Every time I would come home, he would give money. He would do his best to give money for me to go back to the university. But that man, he could have gone and buy a trouser for himself. Yeah. He couldn't buy that because he wanted me to go to the university. He used to tell us, when I would die, they would take everything from me. But they will never take the education I'll give to you. Go study. Go to the university. Today, they took everything, but then they will never take my diplomas that they gave me. Amen. You see how parents can sacrifice themselves. Hallelujah. Amen. So do you think that if you watch a witchcraft, you could have not eaten you a long time ago? Honestly speaking. Even if it's a witchcraft, you must fed that witch is a good witch. <laughs> because in her witchcraft, he managed to pay your school fees. He managed to send you to the university. He managed to give you the life that you have. You don't know how many sacrifices he's doing. Now that I'm a parent, I'm a parent myself, I'm sacrificing myself. I like dressing. I like nice car. But I can't afford that because of my children. Because I want them to go to the university. Sometimes I go there, I feel something nice. I want to buy it, then I remember. Hey, Bereka asked to have Nike, Nike uh, shoes. I look, ah, I stop. Bereka, so you, if you call me witchcraft one day. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. If everything I'm going through, Sometimes you don't understand. He works in a mystery. 
mysterious ways. There are things that are happening, you think that, oh, it is ashaming you. It is not ashaming you. It is hiding you from the eyes of some other people. You don't know what God is able to do for your life. They look on the register, a rock couldn't find. They said, send me the name of all the kids born in the hospital of Bethlehem. They said, boss, here are the name. They look nothing. They look nothing. They look nothing. And then he told them, go, check, find the place, and tell me, I'll also come to worship you. You know, there are people who are coming to your life, you think that they want you good, they want to destroy you. Yeah. I pray for God to open your eyes, yeah. to understand that everybody who's coming next to you is not only wanting good for you. Yeah. There are some herald in your life. Yeah. Now, what the word herald means, herald means killer of stars. Or killer of destiny. Google it. The, 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 the word herald means killer of destiny. So, because the devil knows that you can see your star, if you don't pay attention, the devil can kill your star. He can kill it, my brother. He can kill your star. There are people who are behind you to destroy your destiny. There are people who got married to wives. That came to destroy their destinies because they didn't. There are people who married men who came to destroy their destiny. They are a road. I pray for you to not marry a herald in the name of Jesus. I pray for you to not become a friend to herald because they are coming, but they are coming to destroy your star. They are friends that you hang around with. They are there to destroy your destiny. They are there to destroy your star because they've seen your star. You see, you. You don't even know. You are just walking around. Oh, I got a friend. I got a nice friend. He's doing everything to me. Be careful. There are people that are coming close to you, doing all the good that they're doing to you because they can see the star. But there are also some other people because he see your star. He want to come close to you so that when you be elevated, he can be elevated also. That's a good friend. They saw there was a, a, a gentleman, an old man called Barzilai. In the life of David, he saw Barzillai, he saw David when David was running away from his son, Absalom. Yeah. He was running away. But he looked, he saw the stars. This guy is a king. Although right now he's down, although right now he is crying, let me help him. So that when he be elevated, I'll be elevated with him. The Bible says that when David came back to Jerusalem, he went to find Barzillai. He told him, Barzillai, old man. But I like what David said. He said, come to me. I will do you good. Oh, yeah. Because my God has restored me. Yeah. Come to me, I will do you good. Yeah. Barzillai said, I'm an old man. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Beloved, there are people, when you look at them, you can see their star. Yeah. If you have eyes, they say, mm, this is a, a good man. Yeah. Let me be close. They are asking you, why are you always next to that man? They say, you don't know. Yeah. This is a great star. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me do him good now. So that when he'll be elevated, I'll be among people you remember that this one did me good. Hallelujah. Amen. There are also some people who can see your star from far. They are the hero, the destroyer of your star. They'll give you always advice that destroys you. Always advice. They'll never tell you, let's go to church. Those are the friends who tell you, you're still young. That man, that husband of yours, you, you can leave him. You know, if me, if I was beautiful like you, this man cannot play with me like this. I can go with, uh, tell him a road. You want to destroy my star. I get that. How many men have destroyed their couples because there was a friend at work who always tell him, why your wife is calling you all the time like that? You are the man of the house. Let's prove it today. Don't go on time at home. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't pay rent. She's also working. Hey, la, 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 la. Yeah. Tell him a road. A road. You want to destroy my star. My destiny is for me to take care of my family. My destiny is for me to be the provider of my family. My destiny is to be the head of my family. What are you trying to do to me? A road. Be careful of the road of your life. They are roads. If you don't look at them, if you don't detect them on time, when you open your eyes, your life will be destroyed already. When you open your life, your eyes, your life will be destroyed. Be careful of the erode of your life. There are many heroes, destroyer of the stars, because they can see your stars from far. 
You see, brothers and sisters, that's why certain of children are suffering too much. There are kids, you know, I believe. Watch this space. I believe my last born holiness, there's something with this child. Because we stayed for five months without seeing the baby in Seoul. The gynecologist told me two times, let's just evacuate everything. There's nothing there. And the Lord told me clearly, do not allow him to do that. Call the spirit of the child. They are trying to take away the spirit. Call the spirit to come. If the spirit comes, the body will come and see. Amen. My brother, I call this child, God is my witness. I call when I was praying. I said, I call the spirit of my son because I know his name before he comes. I said, I call the spirit of my son to come back to my wife's home. I call that spirit to come back. Maybe my wife was not away. But I was calling the spirit. I said, the spirit must come back. She bled two times. We went the second time. The doctor called me aside. Lord knows he's not going to be a good gynecologist. Call me aside and say, doctor, you're a doctor. There's nothing. Let just clean her. You try again. I said, no. There's no clean. They're not trying again this time. Again. Yeah. We're not going to try again. We're going to keep that one. I said, doctor, let do it. Let her on the beat. They saw me. They saw my son was kicking. He was kicking his head. I said, wow, he's back. Then I understood that there are certain destinies which are stolen from some people. Yeah. There are pregnancies that you are losing. It's not the will of God. Yeah. Destiny has been stolen. Yeah. There are jobs you are losing. It's not the will of God. Yeah. Destiny has been stolen. Mm -hmm. There are friends you are losing. It's not the will of God. Yeah. Destiny has been stolen. They are friends of destiny, brothers. They are wives of destiny. I have a friend who lost the wife of his destiny. He is telling us, I regret. He was already married. He chased the woman out. Now he's regretting. He's married to another woman. He's telling everyone, hey, sh I wish I could bring back that woman. You lost the wife of your destiny because of a hero. Be careful of the hero of your life. They will come to steal your stuff. Amen. Don't lose people of your destiny. Don't lose your own destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the fourth thing because of time. The Bible said that an angel of the Lord came in the dream and speak to Joseph. He said, take the child. Run to Egypt. Because Aaron is trying to do it. To kill the child. There's four things, my brother. For you to protect your destiny, you need to be obedient to the, the word of God. You need to have the ears that listen to God. Because if you listen to God, God will always tell you what to do. When the killer of destiny are coming your way. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. You know, when you're obeying the word of God, it's for our own good. Beloved, I understand that obedience to the word of God, it is entirely for our own good. Amen. Our own safety and our own security. Our own, our own protection. The Bible says that he came in a dream and told Joseph, go to Egypt. Hide yourself with the baby until Herod will die. Your Herod is not eternal. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you, your Herod is not eternal. Yeah. Those who want your death, they are not eternal. Yeah. They have an expiry date. And I pray for the Lord to terminate their action in your life. Yeah. The Bible says that hey, this young man, Joseph, took in the morning, woke up, said, Baby, let go. Let us go. Where are you going? I just give birth now. What are you talking about? Say, but Mama, take the baby. Go on the, 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 uh, the camel or whatever. Let's go to Egypt. Egypt? Say, yes. Why? Herod is coming. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain things you'll do. People don't understand you. Yeah. But do them. Yes. It is for your own protection. Mm -hmm. He ran away to Egypt. Mm -hmm. He ran away to Egypt. As soon as he went to Egypt, the Bible said, Herod decided to kill all the newborn, two years and under, because he was sure since he couldn't find him in the hospital, he will find him somewhere. Listen, our God is great. If he cannot change the law, he will put an exception upon your life. Amen. Are you getting it? If he cannot change the law, he will put an exception upon your life. You know, every law has an exception. Oh, every law has an exception. So if you cannot change that law, God will bring an exception.
exception upon your life. You'll be exempted like the city of Goshen. When it was dark everywhere, the Bible said at Goshen, there was still the light of God. So God made an exception. He took Jesus out of that place. They killed all the babies. And the Bible said one more time, it was for the prophecy to come to pass. In the book of Isaiah, God said, I know you by your name. I call you by your name. Oh, I, like it. I call you by your name. He said, I will give people at your place. I will give Egypt and Saba at your place. Do you know there are certain accidents that you are witnessing it was meant for you? <laughs> Do you know there are people who are dying next to you? You were the one who was supposed to die. But God divert that death to somebody. He divert your death to somebody. He divert your death to the neighbor. You don't understand. They will enter in the neighbor's house. You'll think that they were, oh, the neighbor. It was not the neighbor, it was you. When they go back to give report, they will give the picture. Yes, we killed them. We killed them. Oh, it's not this person. But who is this one? It is the neighbor. So, yes, because God will take it away. He will take it to Egypt. When you'll be killing people in the Rama, you, you, you will not be shaken. David said, thousand fall on my right and tell thousand on my left. Oh, with my eyes only I will see them. I shall not be shaken. Because the Lord is my retreater. The Lord is my strong, strong tower. Beloved, what you are going through, the pain, the suffering you are going through, it is part of your star. Yeah. Listen, if you have no destiny, the devil is not going to attack you. Oh, yeah. If you have no destiny, the devil is not going to attack you. Yeah. You are attacked the way you are attacked because of the destiny. Yeah. Ask those who have destiny, they are always attacked. Yeah. They are always tormented because of their destiny. The devil is come, will come after them with everything, my brother. Because of your destiny, yeah. that's what is happening. Yeah. The destiny you are having is great. The destiny you are having is great. Yeah. That's why you ask, oh, why always me? Why it always do because of your star? Mm-hmm. It's shining too much. They can see it from far. That's why they have to attack you. They have to shut it down now. Because they don't want it to come to, uh, to pass. They don't want it to shine. They don't want it to be seen. Your star is great. Protect your star by being obedient to the word of God. Protect your star by being submitted to the word of God. Protect your star by listening to the word of God. If you listen, to, imagine, listen. I believe if Joseph refused to listen, Jesus could have been killed. Okay, maybe God would make another plan for another Jesus to come, but imagine what would have happened to you and me. By this time, on the 25th, we could have been somewhere in Shetemba. By now, we could have been drunk. We're coming from drunk like this. But maybe by this time, we could have been buried already. But because somebody obeyed, you know, your obedience will preserve a lot of people. Yeah. Your obedience will preserve your children, will preserve your grandchildren. The obedience of Abraham is making you and me understand that your obedience is not only for you, it's for many other people after you. The obedience of Joseph, it was for the entire humanity. He took the child, he took the mother, they went to Egypt. Obey the word of God, it is for your good and for the good of your children. It is for your good and the good of your family. When you obey God, you are protecting other generations. Because remember, generations are in your loin. The Bible said that when Abraham was giving the tithe to Melchizedek, we were on his loin. So what you are doing in obeying God, there are people on your loin. Your children are on your loin. And you are also doing everything for them. When you are becoming disobedient, you are putting them in trouble. Yeah. Protect your star. Amen. Tell them about protect your star. Protect your star. Tell them again, protect your star. Protect your star. Tell them again, protect your star. Protect your star. By being obedient to God. By being, By being submitted to God. You know, people think that God can be fooled. No. can't fool God. Yes. The Bible says, whatever man will sow. He will reap. But the good thing with God, if I realize, hey, I sowed the wrong thing, 
I can send the fire to kill the bad thing that I saw so that I cannot reap it. That is called mercy. Oh, our God is so good. That is called mercy. Imagine if mercy were not there. Whatever, imagine if whatever you saw you shall reap. Imagine. Imagine if whatever you saw you shall reap. If there were no mercy, all the wrong that you did, you shall get it back. I don't think that any one of us could still be here, me and you. Yeah. But because of his, yes. let us upon our feet. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. Now look at your life. The Lord has spoken to you. First of all, you understand the problem you are going through. It is because of your star. Because of your destiny, which is great. It is attracting a lot of herald. But it's also attracting a lot of good people. Barzillites of your life. Those who want to be there when you be glorified. It is to you to make the difference. The gifts that you can give Jesus this morning. Because we are here to celebrate his birthday. But his gift that you can give him is for you to protect the star he has given you. The destiny he has given you. Don't go to the grave without accomplishing the mission the Lord has given to you. There is something with you, my brother. There is something with you, my sister. I deny you to go into the grave without accomplishing what God has prepared you for. You must accomplish everything that God has prepared for you. So that you can say, like Apostle Paul, I fought the good fight of faith. I kept faith. Start praying God now. Tell the Lord, the only one way I can protect the gift is to be obedient to your word. The only one way is to be obedient to the word. But how will you be obedient to the word that you don't know? Tell him, Lord, give me the strength to meditate the word. I'm entering into the new year. I want to do things differently. I want to walk differently. I had friends that I know very well that those are the Lord of my life. But I've continued to hang around. They only take me to go drink alcohol, to fornication, to lies, and to all those things. You know very well that those friends are not good. But you still hang around with them. Those are your hero. They will kill your destiny. They are killing your star. Speak to God. Speak to God. To the setting of the city. Jesus, I understand now that I have a great destiny. But in front of me, I have heroes who want to destroy my destiny. I also have Barzillai who want to help my destiny. 
Lord, open my eyes to be able to distinguish between them and to go close to my barzillais. Help me, Lord, to protect my star by becoming obedient to your word. A true child of God. Transform and change me and help me to be obedient no matter what in Jesus' mighty name.